So if you've worked on uh, trucks often, you've probably numerous times come across these codes, especially on trucks with Cummins engines in them. Uh, these are your DEF header malfunction codes. Diesel quality, level, and temperature. Um, you, we've been going through headers like crazy, replacing uh, these, and now with the parts shortage, it's very hard to come across this. And these codes will, as you can see, derate, derate your truck and not allow you to drive. <clears throat> so what Cummins has done is that they've come out with a temporary ECM code to let you bypass the header replacement until parts become available. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. I'm going to show you how to update the ECM temporarily so you can use the truck even though the DEF, the DEF header is malfunctioning. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need your <clears throat> engine serial number your uh, ECM code and um, your ECM password which the engine serial number can be found here and the ECM code can be found here so before you uh, move on write those things down uh, because you're going to need them in the next step so this is a fairly uh, in-depth procedure if you don't have access to Cummins Insight or Cummins Quick Serve or um, fleet count calibrations, you're probably not going to be able to do this. But in case you do, uh, you open up Cummins Quick Serve and you enter in your engine serial number that you got from being connected before and you up update that. All right, your ECN has been updated and then you want to hit service service part, portion right there. Once you're in the service screen, you want to come over here to the TSBs, Technical Service Bulletins, and scroll down because it's going to be in a kind of a tricky place. You want to go to Group 19 Electronic Engine Controls. And right here, fault codes caused by D diesel exhaust fluid header malfunctions. That's the technical service bulletin you want to open up um, in order to get your ECM calibration, your, your new ECM uh, code and other instructions for what is happening, what I'm going to do next. So you scroll down and you can uh, find the link to match up your ECM code to the new ECM code that you're going to be uh, programming it to. It's right here. I uh, printed up the master list, so I already have mine available. But that's where you go to to find and match up your old ECM code with the new one that you're going to be programming in there. So here's an example of the master list with my ECM code, as you see marked there, HC80013. The new ECM code is going to be HC80951. So once you have um, your new ECM code, you got to get a, a fleet count from Cummins because you're going to be changing the ECM code. It requires a fleet count from uh, Cummins, which you can purchase through Nexic or something else. But that will give you an activation key. Then you come to your Cummins license configuration tool and you put in that activation key that it gave you when you purchased that fleet count. So that's what I'm going to do now and then I'm going to hit activate. So once you hit activate, you should get this screen. License was activated successfully. All right, once you have Cummins Insight back opened up, because you have to close it in order to use the license configuration tool. Uh, what I like to do before I connect to the truck, you might not have to, but just better safe than sorry, um, is I click on calibration selection prior to connecting to the truck. That'll bring up this screen. Then I hit the ECM PDD code search. Now here I'm going to type in the new 
ECM code, the one that I'm, I want to program this truck to. That's HC80951. And then I hit search. What this is gonna do is it's gonna find that ECM code and then I'll hit save if it's not already saved to Cummins Insight on this computer. And that way when I hook up, I can actually access it and calibrate my ECM with it. But as you see, save is not uh, available. So that means it's already um, available on your, your tablet. So now you can connect to your um, truck. And like I said, you're gonna need your, your password, your master password in order to do this correction. So you'll have to find the password for your truck if it needs one and put it in now. Now that you're connected to your truck again, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is come to the features and parameters tab. We need to get our ECM part number. Once this loads up, you'll um, expand a couple of boxes to access your ECM part number, which you need in order to find the right calibrations for your truck. It takes a long time for that to load, but now that it's finally loaded, you wanna expand system ID and data plate, and then ECM information. And right there, you'll have your ECM part number. I usually just remember the last four, so mine would be 4413. Once you have that, you can close that out and you go to calibration selection, and then you hit the bottom option this time. And that'll bring you to this, this screen and you expand calibration workspace. Touch screens. So once you get to this screen, you want to expand calibration workspace, date, automotive and then you have to find your 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 specific engine so this is the b6.7 etc and that matches with the top one here so i'll expand that one and then i find my ecm part number 4413 and click on that now if you recall, my previous or my current ECM code is 80013. There it is right there. I need to scroll down and find my new ECM code, which is 80951. So we're going to scroll down all the way down until we find 80951. Obviously, they're in numerical order, so you should know how far down you need to go. And there we are. You'll notice that the little purple or pink is next to those that you cannot access, but the ones that you can don't have the pink dot next to them. So I click on that. You can either double click to get it started, or you can hit this little monitor with the red and white lightning bolt looking thing next to it, and that will get the calibration started. So I click on that. I click on that and it brings me here. Next. I agree. Next. See now this is where your fleet count calibration uh, comes into uh, comes into effect you're required to have that fleet count in order to change the ECM code. And this is checking right now to see if you have one. I do, therefore I'm gonna check this box, hit okay. Once that is successful, I'll just hit next and continue with programming as usual. And 
mixed again. One more final time, I'm sure. And the calibration process is underway. Programming is complete and we see it says that it is successful. What you'll notice is that your DEF gauge will still not be working. It'll still be flashing red like it's empty, even though it's full or whatever level it's at. But you won't be derated or have the check engine lights anymore. So that's the way it's gonna be. You gotta keep an eye on your uh, DEF gauge or your DEF level. Um, but this takes rid of, it takes care of the derating caused by the DEF header malfunction until parts become available. So I hope that helps.